Why a victory over death? Victory over death. So let's invite Brother Hart now to take us through this talk. Why a victory over death is needed? Religion often portrayed death as a friend, a passage between different stages of existence. What do you expect from a friend if you lost some loved one in death? Don't you expect some support, comfort, help? Death brings pain, shock, grief, loneliness, confusion, and a sense of loss to bereaved family. If you are asked to describe death in one word, which word comes to your mind? The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 26, describes death as our enemy. This enemy often cuts down men and women in the prime of their lives. That's why the Bible says death is the end of all mankind. As long as we are living in this wicked system, death will swallow up everyone. And despite the efforts of science to battle death, the Bible says that death is still ruling as king over mankind. So we see now the need for victory over death. Certainly and desperately, we need this victory. This brings us to another question. Is victory over death possible? Well, before we answer this question, we need to understand what is death. The conception of death has been a mystery to billions of people in all religions. They don't know what happens after death. And that's why billions of people have been enslaved to deceptive superstitions and wrong beliefs, like the false of immortal soul. It's a false doctrine. The Bible, in a simple way, says that Death is opposite life. When the person is alive, he can move, eat, drink, travel, enjoy. But when he is dead, he can do nothing at all. Notice how the Bible describes the condition of the dead in Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 10. It says here for Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 10. For the living know that they will die. But the dead know nothing at all. Go down to verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do with your, your might. For there is no work, no planning, no wisdom or knowledge, and no in the grave where you are going. So as you notice here, brothers, that a dead person, he has no conscious existence. He can do nothing at all. He doesn't feel. He doesn't think. Many religions believe in an immortal soul that survived death. On the other hand, the Bible says there is nothing survived death. How do we know? When Jehovah formed Adam out of dust and gave him the breath of life, the scripture in Genesis 2, 7 says, then the man became a living person, or the foot footnote says, living soul. So you notice here that Adam was a soul, or became a soul. He did not possess a soul. And as Ezekiel 18.4 says, the soul can die. It's not immortal. From the beginning, if we can have the first picture, Brother Joseph, from, from the beginning, man was made not to die but to live and keep living. When Jehovah created Adam, he gave him a guarantee for eternal life. The Bible talks in Genesis 2, 9 about the tree of life in the middle of the garden. This tree of life was God's guarantee of eternal life to Adam. God's guarantee was conditional. Like any warranty, 
you may have when you purchase a product. If you read on the warranty instructions, there are guidelines, instructions to follow, and things to avoid. If you follow, you will benefit from the guarantee. But if you ignore them or breach them, you will lose your warranty. Jehovah put up on Adam just one simple commandment, or we can say one simple condition. Genesis 2, let's read it together. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17. It says here, but as for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it. For in the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. You notice here that death was not on God's agenda for Adam. Uh, death was only the penalty of disobeying Jehovah's commandment. As long as Adam remained obedient to Jehovah, he was able to enjoy this everlasting life privilege. There was a prospect ahead of him, but Adam disobeyed Jehovah. So Jehovah canceled Adam's warranty. As we can see in the picture, Adam, uh, God put Adam and Eve outside the Garden of Eden so they don't reach the tree of life and eat from it. Adam lost the privilege of living forever for himself and also for all his descendants. That's why Romans 5.12 says, sin and death spread to all mankind. But Jehovah lovingly, he promised to save us from this ordeal. How God is going to save us? Well, the answer is in Hosea chapter 13. Let's read the scripture together. Hosea, it's uh, after Daniel book, chapter 13 and verse 14. It says here, from the power of the grave, I will redeem them. From death, I will recover them. Where are your stings or death? Where is your destructiveness O grave? So there are two key words here, redeem and recover. Jehovah promises to redeem or recover mankind from death. Or as Isaiah 25, 8 says, to swallow up death, he will do that in the resurrection. Jehovah will redeem and recover mankind, bringing back all those who perish in death back to life. What is a resurrection? The Greek word translated to resurrection is anesthesis, means standing up again. So man, when he dies, he lies down, but Jehovah by his Holy Spirit, his power, can raise him up, making him standing up again, giving him life, restoring his life pattern, bringing back his memory. Can Jehovah do that? Especially when you think about our marvelous human brain that may have about 200 billion nerve cells. And all those nerve cells connected together by trillions of tiny contacts. Can Jehovah bring the same person with the same memory? Let's consider two Bible examples. Matthew 10, 30, Jesus said, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Now, this is a heartwarming statement that tells us that Jehovah is deeply interested in us. And also, we have value in Jehovah's eyes. That also tells us that Jehovah knows everything about us. Let's consider another example, if we can have the galaxy picture, please. This is uh, the Milky Way galaxy. Isaiah 40, 26, Jehovah invites all of us. He says, lift up your eyes and see. What can we see? Maybe in a very dark place, we can see up to 3,000 stars. But in the city, we can see only up to 100 stars. The galaxy, this galaxy, they 
uh, reckoning that it has between 100 and 400 billion stars. And they may be trillions of galaxies. Now multiply billions by trillions, the number is beyond our comprehension. The Bible says, Jehovah called them all by name. Not one of them is missing. The countless stars and galaxies that make up the immense universe testifies to Jehovah's greatness, his infinite power, infinite wisdom, and infinite memory. Yes, Jehovah can easily remember all the people with all their details. Jehovah will resurrect all those in his memory. He will bring them back to life. Before Jesus came to earth, if we take the picture down, thank you. Before Jesus came to earth, the resurrection hope, especially for ancient men of faith, like Job, they had only partial understanding what really the resurrection involves. Uh, for instance, uh, Job himself, he had strong faith in the resurrection. Notice what he said in Job 14, 14 and 15. He said, he asked, if a man dies, can he live again? Well, he answers himself. He said, you will call and I will answer you. You long or you will long for the work of your hands. Jehovah looks forward for the resurrection. He has earnest desire and keenly anticipated the resurrection. When Jesus came to earth, he shed full light on the resurrection. The Apostle Paul was able to say in 2 Timothy 1.10, Christ has abolished death and has shed light on life and in corruption through the good news. The good news Jesus preached about involves a promise, a promise for a heavenly kingdom or heavenly life. But this heavenly life, Jesus said in Luke 12, 32, it's only to a little flock, a small group. Jesus later on in the book of Revelation, he revealed that this small group designated by Jehovah to rule with Jesus in heaven as kings and priests, they would number just 144,000. This group, uh, Jesus, when he was ascended to heaven and presented the value of his ransom sacrifice to Jehovah in the most holy place, Jesus opened the way to heavenly life for this small group. The 144,000 will enter the heavenly glory as Jesus did. As the scriptures in Romans 6, 5 says, we will be united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. So they are given incorruptible spirit bodies. The majority of the 144,000, they already experienced the heavenly resurrection. They are up in heaven with Jesus Christ only a remnant is still waiting here on earth. This is only 144,000. What about the rest of mankind? Jesus made another promise. In John 10, 16, Jesus promised that he would bring salvation to other sheep. Also, while he was dying on the torture stake, in his last minutes on earth, he made another promise to the evildoer. He said, you will be with me in paradise, not in heavenly kingdom, but in paradise. Those two expressions or promises, other sheep and paradise, assure us that others will be living forever on a paradise earth. In the first century, Jesus made many miracles including three resurrections. Those resurrections Jesus performed were a foregleam or a sample for what he is going to do in the future on a larger scale when he rules in his kingdom. 
also those resurrections reflected Jehovah's and Jesus tender affection compassion love and mercy especially toward those bereaved families let's consider or examine one resurrection Jesus performed if you open your Bibles to Luke chapter 7 verses 11 to 17 Luke 7 11 to 17 and as we read uh, this portion of the Bible just visualize yourself back there with Jesus or with the widow this is a resurrection of a son of the widow of Nain in verse 12 it says as he got near the gate of the city why look there was a dead man being carried out the only son of his mother beside she was a widow a considerable crowd from the city was also with her when the Lord caught sight of her he was moved with pity for her and he said to her stop weeping now let's think about it brothers uh, can you feel as Jesus felt or can you feel as the widow felt uh, Jesus is deeply moved his heart is touched by the extreme sadness and grief grief of this widow old lady her only son her only hope her only comfort that was swept away she was left alone how did Jesus or what did Jesus do let's continue reading in verses 14 and 15 with that he approached and touched the bear and the bear stood still then he said young man I say to you get up and the dead man sat up and started to speak and Jesus gave him to his mother no doubt if we were there we, our tears definitely will go down uh, but our tears now of sadness and the tears of sadness of this woman change into tears of joy now can you imagine if we can have the last picture brother Joseph can you imagine our tears of joy when we experience like as you see in this picture when you experience personally Jehovah's compassion tender affection and his love when our fathers mothers children husbands wives friends all come back to life Jesus promised that he will resurrect in John 5 28 29 all those in the memorial tomb will hear his voice and come out the resurrection will include two groups in uh, Acts 24 15 if we can read it together Acts 24 verse 15 notice what it says here and I have hope toward God which hope this man also look forward to that there is going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous Jesus will resurrect the faithful righteous man and woman and also he will resurrect millions of people who died in ignorance before coming to know or hear about Jehovah and apply the Bible truth in their lives Jehovah will give them an, another opportunity as a loving father he will do that uh, those millions who will be resurrected would they create a chaotic population explosion would they create a problem well the answer is no because we know that the heavenly resurrection is orderly first Corinthians 15 says each one in his proper order so we reasonably conclude that the earthly resurrection will will be also orderly no doubt preparations will be made to care for the need of those resurrected ones what a thrilling time to be alive and welcome back our loved ones and all those faithful old men and women of faith 
there are many benefits of the resurrections. The resurrection is one means by which Jesus will defeat Satan, the devil. Satan trying hard to cause us death, to keep us away from Jehovah. And that means no everlasting life for us. But when Jesus fulfills God's purpose for a human, giving us everlasting life, helping us to receive perfection, living in paradise, Jesus will break up the walls of the devil. The resurrection hope also has many benefits even today. For instance, it can strengthen us to battle discouragement, help us to cope with problems successfully. This hope of the resurrection can be likened to rain. Rain keeps vegetation, trees alive, strong and fruitful. So too, reflecting on Jehovah's promise of the resurrection keeps us spiritually alive, strong and fruitful. One of the benefits of this uh, resurrection hope, it can uh, strengthen us to deal with illness and the prospect of dying. This experience or what happened to this sister is very uh, emotionally moving. Uh, it's, she is 15 years old. Her name is Sister Ronella Inconditi. She died on July 1992 because of leukemia. But before her death, she wrote a letter. And the letter was read at her memorial service. The letter reads in part, Dear friends, thank you for coming. Your presence means a lot to my family. To the people that were close to me, we have been through a lot. We had a lot of bad times, but there were also some funny times too. It was a hard and long fight, but I don't feel that I have failed. As it says in the scriptures, 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the fine fight. I have run the course to the finish. I have observed the faith. You who believe in the new system and in Jehovah know there will be a resurrection, just as John 5, 28, 29 says. So keep strong in the faith and we will be able to see one another again. Ronella did not let her youth or her illness to hinder her from dedicating her life to Jehovah. She was dedicated and baptized before his, her death. Her example of faith and determination encourages all of us, young and old alike, to press on toward dedication and baptism. Don't, don't let anything, brothers, sisters, let you or hinder you from running the race for life. Also, the hope of the resurrection helps us to cope with the loss of loved ones. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, you may not sorrow as the rest do who have no hope. In February 1996, 26 witnesses from one congregation, bailing congregation in Spain, they lost their lives because of a bus and car accident. The worldwide brothers and sisters, the king of the, the country and the, the minister of public work, the mayor, the people of Balin, they all came to support and comfort the bereaved families. But above all, they found comfort in Jehovah God. As the Bible says, the father of tender mercies and the God of all comfort. It was very moving experience to see members and families visiting one another. Even some of them, they lost up to 10, uh, eight members from their family and relatives, but they still making the effort to comfort one another. One of them was brother Francisco Cis, an elder who had lost his 
only two children. He said, when we saw each other, we wept, but through the tears, we reminded ourselves of the resurrection hope, and we felt comforted. Yes, the resurrection hope can comfort us. Also, this hope can give us courage in the face of worst persecutions. Over 70 years have passed now since Jehovah's Witnesses in, in Germany were released from concentration camps. One of them was a sister, 97 years old. Her name is Maria Hambach. She said, I bubble over with joy in knowing I had the unique privilege of proving my love and gratefulness to Jehovah under the cruelest of circumstances. They tried hard by threat to get us to obey Hitler more than God, but without success. The course of integrity of those faithful brothers and sisters is still speaking out to the whole world and a praise to Jehovah. Also, the resurrection hope helped us to avoid the pessimistic live for today attitude. People in the world, they have no hope. So they live to satisfy their fleshly desires. For us, without the hope of eternal life, or without the hope of the resurrection, Christianity would be in vain, without purpose. But we are sure there is everlasting life, and there is resurrection. So we need to fortify ourselves by reading the Bible daily, meditating on it, we can strengthen our faith in the resurrection hope. And we can make a good name with Jehovah, a name Jehovah will never forget. Jehovah longs to see faithful departed ones again. Soon we all will say thanks to God for he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. By means of the resurrection, Jehovah will gain victory over death.